It only takes a day. What can happen in a day? There was a little girl whose parents had died and left her an orphan. And she happened to have a cousin who apparently was much older than she was. And he took her into his home to raise her, even as his own daughter. There came a day the king of that nation decided to have a party. So he called all of his friends in and they partied 185 days. They partied and partied. And the last day or the last of the party, he called his queen to come in because he wanted to show her off. He wanted to show how beautiful she was and everything, and she refused to come. So needless to say, all of the men in the party decided for him that he should get rid of her because if she acted that way, how was their wives going to all act? So he got rid of her, he got rid of her, and it came out that he wanted a new queen. And so this little girl had grown up into a beautiful young lady, and she was among the virgins that they called forth to show to the king or to present to the king. And when she went in to see the queen, king, she found great favor in his sight. And he decided that little Hadessa, who had grown up and now was ready to be queen, would be called Queen Esther, and she was brought to the throne. Her cousin was Mordecai, who had raised her, and he sat at the city gate every day, checking on his beloved Esther. He was checking to see if she was all right, if she needed anything, what could he ever do to help? And so he stayed there ready to help or ready to come if Esther needed him. As he was sitting there one day, he overheard a plot and two men were plotting to kill the king. He got the attention of a person that would take the messages back and forth from him to Queen Esther. And he said, please take this message to Queen Esther. There are two men that are plotting to kill the king. So Esther received that message and took it to the king, and the king got rid of those men. He was able to exterminate them instead of them killing him. There was a man called Haman during this time that made himself very valuable to the king. You know how the circle around important people tightens and, and some people will rise to the top. And this is what was happening with Haman. He was rising to the top and he was being given much honor and much prestige. And it was required that everybody would bow before him and pay homage. And when he would go in and out of the king's gate, Mordecai would never pay attention to him. He would never bow. He would never pay any kind of homage to him, which made Haman angrier by the day. <clears throat> and so Haman went into the king and he said that Mordecai was leading a group against him and they weren't obeying the king's orders and they needed to be killed. And he got the king to agree that he could send out a letter to not only kill Mordecai, but to kill all the Jews in every city in that land to get rid of them. And he picked a particular day. When Mordecai heard about this plan, he was grieved as he could be. And he started wailing and he tore his clothes and he put on sackcloth and ashes and he sat outside the queen's gate or the king's gate. And as he sat there, Queen Esther saw him out there in that rubble, as it were. And she sent clothes to him for him to change clothes, and he refused to put them on. So she sent out to ask, what is the problem? Why are you in such a state as you are? And whenever she, he wrote back or he said back to her, he said, we're in trouble. Our people are in trouble. And he said that she needed to go before the king 
and intercede for the king or they would all be killed and she would be among that number because she also was a Jew and it would kill all the people in the nation and in that land. And she wrote, sent back to him, well, I can't go. She said, if I would go and the king doesn't show his scepter or lower his scepter to me, she said, I will be killed. And Haman wrote her back the words, do not think in your heart that you will escape in a king's palace any more than any other Jews. For if you remain completely silent at this time, Relief and deliverance will come. You won't stop it from coming, but it will arise for the Jews from another place, but you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Who knows whether you, whether I, have come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Then the king had a very sleepless night, and he called for his chronicles to be read to him. And they brought his book of chronicles in and started reading. And they came to the passage that told about Mordecai, giving the warning that the king's life was in danger. And when the king heard that, the king said, what was done for this man? And they said, nothing. And just as he was talking about that, Haman was walking in the palace. And so the king asked Haman, said, what should be done for a man that I would want to greatly honor? And Haman, being the kind of person that he was, thought it was all about him. And so he said, well, you should bring out one of your horses that you've ridden, and you should put this person on that horse, and then you should clothe him in your robes. And you should have someone lead him around the city on the horse, proclaiming, this is what's done for a person whom the king wants to honor. Much to Haman's chagrin, the king then said, go, do all you have said for Mordecai. Queen Esther did go before the king and she was accepted. And whenever she was asked, what would she like up to half the kingdom? She said, I'd like for you and Haman to come to dinner. And then at dinner that night, she asked him to come the next day for dinner. And when they came the next day for dinner, Queen Esther exposed all that Haman had plotted to do against her and her people. This little orphan girl, there's no way she could become queen but she became queen for such a time as that. And in a day, Haman was exposed and Haman was eliminated. And all the power that Haman had went to Mordecai and even more so. Haman was hanged and later all 10 of his sons were hanged. But Queen Esther was given his house and Mordecai was put over his property. Mordecai was given the signet ring of the king and he was clothed in the royal garments and given much authority in the kingdom. Then a letter went out sealed with the king's signet ring. And on that day when all the Jews were to be exterminated, the very day that Haman had set for that extermination, the letter declared and ordered the Jews to arise and anyone that would come to kill them or take them out at all should be killed. And they were, the day was turned. In one day, it all changed. Queen Esther and Mordecai then wrote out letters confirming this day and they called it Purim. And Purim is celebrated even these years now, centuries later. And gifts are given and feasts are enjoyed. And it's because that instead of a victim, they became victorious on that day. Just a day is all that it took. 
and if everything was completely reversed. In a day when the Jews were to be exterminated, it was the people who were exterminated that were going to kill them. In a day, Haman's power was eradicated and he was exterminated. And in a day, Mordecai was brought from sitting at the king's gate in uh, sackcloth and ashes, and he was brought into power in a day. It's amazing to watch this story of Ruth, of, of Esther. We're in the last day of 2019. Tomorrow we go into 2020, a new year and a new de decade. The last two decades have been very bad in lots of ways, seemingly over our land and over the world, throughout the world. It seems like we have flip-flopped on so many things, too numerous to even count. And maybe in a way it seems that your life has done that. Maybe it seems like it has flip-flopped and everything bad and everything evil and bad diagnosis have come to you. But even as the bad diagnosis came to Mordecai that he and all of his people were to be killed, in a day it was changed. We serve Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, the Lord and Savior who sits at the right hand of God the Father, who intercedes for us, who died for us, that we could be saved and live in heaven eternally with him. We die, he died and he was striped for our healing. He became poor that we might become rich in all things, spiritually and pocketbook, in every way. He died and took the beating and paid the price of the wrath of God that we don't have to enter into any wrath of God. What a God and what a Savior. And I'm telling you today, that in a day, your circumstances can change with the power and the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you today, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, I'm forgetting those things which are behind, and I'm reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward calls of God in Christ Jesus. May each and every one of you receive great joy and great peace as you step into 2020. May each of you know and experience Jesus Christ in 2020 like you've never known him and like you've never experienced him before. May you have a decade exceedingly, abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that works in you. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Maybe you are called to the kingdom for such a time as this. Happy New Year to you and yours from me and mine. God bless.